please. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so just a, a brief deviation away from osteoidosteomas here. Um, so as many of you know, bone mets are a common source of morbidity in patients with malignancy and seen in a wide range of common cancers. And these patients have limited treatment options, uh, most recently including focused ultrasound. Um, so our research question was, in US patients with refractory pain from bone metastases, is palliation with focused ultrasound compared to, to medication alone cost effective in terms of incremental dollar per quality adjusted life year for 24 month time horizon and from a health systems perspective? Um, when you're doing cost effective analyses, there are a variety of different perspectives that you can take um, from the patient perspective, hospital departments, um, or the, the payer. And so we were sort of focused on societal direct medical cost. Um, in terms of our, our methods, we, we built a Markov state transition model using Triage Pro software to model cost, outcomes, and cost effectiveness of a treatment strategy using focused ultrasound to pain medication alone. Um, and then we estimated transition state probabilities, costs in terms of um, 2018 dollars and effectiveness data in terms of qualities from the combination of the literature, local expert opinion, and reimbursement data at two centers performing focused ultrasound of bone mets. Um, costs and qualities were discounted at a rate of 3% per year, fairly standard with cost effectiveness analyses. Uh, we also assumed approximately 80% of the cohort would, uh, would be deceased at 24 months um, based on some comparable studies in the, the radiation literature. Um, and then we performed a one-way and multi-way sensitivity analyses. Um, so this is uh, our, our tree, and I, I don't expect to go through this in excruciating detail, but just um, broadly, patients would receive either HIFU or this medication-only strategy. If you ended up in the HIFU arm, you could have HIFU up to um, three times. Uh, and about, we, we decided that about 50% of the patients who had had focused ultrasound but um, failed treatment or had persistent pain would have liked to have repeat focused ultrasound. Um, cost estimates, uh, in terms of insurance reimbursement, we were estimating about $17,000 on average um, based on the, the two institutions we were looking at. Um, we also performed a micro-costing approach where we tried to itemize the, the cost of the scanner time um, the cost of the, the focused ultrasound treatment itself, um, radiologist time, anesthesia time, nursing time, all of the costs that we could think of on a, a more specific level. And that ended up with a number that was fairly below um, this, this reimbursement target. So to be conservative, we used this, uh, the $17,000 figure. Um, in terms of the medication costs, we were using OxyContin as the surrogate for palliation of pain. Um, initially with uh, that cost at $430 a month based on red book data and then increasing assuming patients are going to have tolerance over time. Um, those who had significant pain relief following focused ultrasound, we decreased the usage of opioids but did not completely eliminate it. So they still had some continued costs from OxyContin. Um, in terms of effectiveness, we got this data from the, uh, the radiation literature for palliation of bone metastases, basically the, the state of pain relief. Um, is about 0.55 quality-adjusted life years, and state of persistent pain, 0.30 quality-adjusted life years. Um, transition probabilities, we estimate about 80% pain chance of pain relief from focused ultrasound, um, and then these uh, probabilities for uh, relapse pain, focused ultrasound, and death um, per month. We set the willingness to pay threshold at $100,000 per quality-adjusted life year. Uh, and then in our base case analysis for the focused ultrasound strategy, we uh, calculated an incremental cost of about $9,000 over a two-year time horizon for an additional 0.22 uh, quality-adjusted life years gained. Um, so that uh, works out to about $40,000 per quality-adjusted life year, making focused ultrasound the preferred strategy. We then performed a range of sensitivity analyses. I'll just show a few of them here. Um, for example, we wanted to determine the crossover point at which medication only would become the preferred strategy. That ends up being at about $26,000 per focus, focused ultrasound treatment. Um, we wanted to see if we increase the number of patients repeating focused ultrasound from 50% to 100%, um, that only slightly increased the, the ICER, so um, sort of somewhat immune to, to that change. Uh, and then if focused ultrasound treatment efficacy decreased from 80% for each of up to three treatments, down to 60%, down to 40% for a third treatment. That kind of moderately increased the ICER, but still well below our willingness to pay threshold. 
Um, so the study was limited in that it didn't take into account treatment eligibility with regard to site metastasis. Um, the time horizon is greatly influenced by the, the tumor type. Um, the estimation of probability of symptom relief um, and recurrence is limited by the number of trials and varying lengths of follow-up. And the, the relative lack of focused ultrasound-specific quality of life data. Um, the break-even point um, in terms of take-home points, again, is about $26,000 is what we calculated in terms of the focused ultrasound reimbursement price. And the percentage of patients repeating focused ultrasound and decreasing efficacy did not significantly affect the preferred strategy. Thanks for your attention. <laughs> Happy to answer any questions. Yeah. <laughs> Fishing. Dr. Canini. Very cool stuff, Matt. Uh, two questions for you. The, the repeat treatments, is the intent to repeat the treatment of the same lesion or other lesions or either? For the same lesion. So basically saying if the patient either developed relapsed pain or didn't have pain relief with the first, tre first treatment, sure. just imagining the, those patients having a second or third treatment. Okay. So that's, that's imposed a fairly conservative addition then, because usually a single treatment's meant to be enough. That's right, yeah. So we just were trying to be as conservative as possible. And then I would only make the other point that your, your, your limit of 25,000 before medication becomes uh, the more effective option, you're assuming only that patients are only on OxyContin, and usually our patients are on much, much more than just OxyContin. Yeah, lots of combinations. We were trying to... I, again, sort of test focus ultrasound as much as possible, but it would be important to include those in a fuller. So analysis. even in the simplified case, it's still yeah. five thousand. Yeah, exactly. Thanks. What's the real impediment for clinical adoption of this approach? Um, the there isn't. I, I think right now insurance tends to cover it fairly often. Um, it's mostly sort of the the patient flow. So a lot of these patients will end up getting radiation. And if they fail radiation, as you know, up to 30, maybe 40% of them will, they don't necessarily get directed from the radiation oncologist to us. Um, in fact, our radiation oncologists have been sort of hostile to um, referring patients to focus ultrasound. So it's more just trying to get the word out to, to medical oncologists who sort of are serving in that directing role for the patient's overall clinical care. And um, I found that the, the more aware that they are of this option, the the better our odds of having patients refer. How many do you treat a week or a month? In we treat system? about, for the bone metastasis, we treat about maybe one every other month. And again, it's sort of, we go and we do these outreach events with different oncology groups and there's a brief uptick in referrals and then it kind of peters out over time. So it's just gonna take sort of repeated outreach, I think. That's unfortunate. Yeah. <laughs> Does it make any sense to do such an analysis against uh, radiotherapy? Um, I, I think it, it does sort of for, for completion sake, but the challenges with doing that is that when you're doing these types of analyses, you're looking for an intervention that perhaps is more expensive but has offers a lot more effectiveness or is much cheaper but has maybe um, somewhat less effectiveness. And radiation and high focus ultrasound are expected to have that different uh, effectiveness or, or price, so might be limited. Okay. Thank you.